Hello, this is Rick from MathX, and today we'll be solving the number 25 from the AMC 12A of 2020. Now this problem is quite intimidating. It has weird notation and a confusing equation. And for the test takers on the AMC 12A, it looks quite scary. But even though this problem is quite intimidating and not an easy solve by any means, it has quite an elegant and understandable solution that can be derived just by using a couple of neat algebraic tricks. That's why I'll be going over this problem today, to show you these neat algebraic tricks that make this behemoth of a problem much more manageable. So, without further ado, let's just get straight into this problem. The number a equals p by q, where p and q are relatively prime positive integers, has a property that the sum of all real numbers satisfying the floor of x times the fractional component of x equals to a times x squared is 420, where the floor of x denotes the greatest integer less than or equal to x. And the fractional component of x is merely x minus the floor of x, denotes the fractional part of x. What is p plus q? So the basis for this problem is quite simple. We have this magical constant a, which is a fraction. And when we plug a into this equation, we'll find out that the sum of all real values that can be x to satisfy this scary equation is 420. Along with that, if you didn't understand the notation providing the problem, this gives you more context to understand it. The floor of x denotes the greatest integer less than or equal to x, and the fractional component of x is x minus the floor of x. So let's say that x is 6.5, the floor of x would be 6, and the fractional component of x would be 0.5. So using this knowledge, it seems quite hard to find out what p over q is, and it might be quite intimidating to attack. So let's just start by thinking out, how will this equation work in the first place? Like, what happens? If we plug in a positive number, the computation becomes ugly, but I think it's safe to assume that it's possible. But you'll notice that if you plug in a negative number into this equation, the equation fails to function. Because if you plug a negative value in for x, this ax squared on the right side will give us a positive quantity. But the left-hand side, when we take the floor of a negative quantity, we're going to get a negative quantity. But this fractional component will make it positive. So negative times positive makes this left-hand side negative. So thus, we see that if we plug in a negative value for x, the equation fails to hold up. As the right-hand side will give us a positive value, and the left-hand side will give us a negative value. So right before we've even done any major math, we already have the statement that x itself has to be greater than or equal to 0. So this is an interesting place to start. Next, we could maybe try setting up this equation in more friendly terms. This floor of x and this fractional component of x, these are really hard to deal with as we don't really have or know many good operations to deal with. This. So let, let's turn this into something more manageable. We can do this by expressing this floor of x as n. And then by taking this value of n, we can Similarly, express the fractional component of x as x minus n, as typically the fractional component of x is simply x minus the floor of x. But since we substitute the floor of x with n, we can substitute it here as well. 
So then, we can write this equation, and instead of dealing with this ugly 4 and fractional component, we get this equation with much more nice looking variables. And it's reminiscent of a Diophantine equation, where we just search for integer roots, or integer solutions. Because we know that n must be an integer, as it's what happens when we round x to the nearest whole number. So, using this convention, we can rewrite this hideous expression as n times x minus n. So the floor of x times the fractional component of x is simply n times x minus n. And just as this is equal to ax squared, we can write the same thing for this expression. So now we get this new equation, n times x minus n is equal to ax squared. Distributing across both sides and then taking the n times x minus n to the other side, we can develop this quadratic. ax squared minus nx plus n squared. And just in case if you missed it, we just distributed this across nx minus n squared and just took it to the other side. So we get this quadratic. And just like any good quadratic, we can use this to understand what the solutions of x will look like. And then hopefully, once we get these solutions of x, we can understand how we can use these solutions of x to add up to 420. So we can't really foil this out as we don't really know how to foil this out or factor this out. So instead, to fact to find the roots of this quadratic, we'll use the quadratic formula. Minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So applying the quadratic formula to this equation, we get n plus minus the square root of n squared minus 4a n squared over 2a will give us the form of the possible solutions for x. Now, here's where it gets a little interesting. For x, it seems like the solutions that satisfy x and add up to 420 can take on two of these general forms. n plus the square root of n squared minus 4an squared over 2a, or n minus the square root of n squared minus 4an squared over 2a. But the thing is, only one of these general forms for the roots works. We can figure out which form works by remembering another essential fact about the value x with respect to n. Remember, n is what we used to denote the floor of x. So whereas x is this weird mixed number, like three and a half, n is merely the largest integer less than that. So we can write this inequality. n is less than or equal to x. But here's the thing. Since x is a mixed number quantity, greater than n, and n is the greatest integer less than this mixed number quantity, x itself would have to be less than or equal to n plus 1. Actually, more x would have to be less than n plus 1. And you can just think about this and try to understand this by using an example. Let's say x is 3 and a half. 3 and a half is greater than 3, but it's less than 4. And then just by testing these values, you can understand how this works. So since we found that x has to take this form, it easily becomes clear that x, in order to maintain this inequality and satisfy this inequality as well, x has to be the lower solution. Otherwise, it will break out of this range. So this makes it clear that the only solution that will work for x is the n minus root n squared minus 4an squared over 2a. And if you're still not convinced, just 
try experimenting with the plus case. And if you do that, you'll see that it'll break out of the range. So it's clear that the only case that works is when the solutions are in the form x equals n minus root n squared minus 4an squared all over 2a. So now the job is to find out how many and what solutions will come in this form and how to, to make it so that they add up to 420. And hopefully along the way, we'll find out what A is and solve this problem. So in order to do those steps, we have to factor out N from this huge expression. So by factoring out N, we can rewrite this thing as N times 1 minus root 1 minus 4A all over 2A. So with this in mind, we can use a couple of other facts to draw a relationship between the sum of all the terms that appear like this and 420, as they should be equal with one another. Since n varies from all positive con consecutive integers, we can express the sum of all the values that appear as this as 1 minus root 1 minus 4a over 2a times 1 plus 2 plus 3 as all such consecutive integers to a certain number such that this right hand side expression 1 plus 2 plus 3 all the way to n is the sum of consecutive integers less than or equal to 420. And this product of this, these two expressions will give us 420 itself. So this side will give us a value less than 420, and this side will give us a fraction that helps push this value over the edge to 420. And this is how we get that the sum of all numbers satisfying this expression is 420. So now we just have to understand what number would give us the maximum value of this less than 420. And by using the simple formula that computes for the sum of a consecutive series, n times n plus 1 over 2, we see that the maximum sum of consecutive numbers that we can achieve that is less than 420 is 406. And this happens when n is equal to 28. So instead of writing the sum of consecutive numbers, we can simply express this again as 406. So from here, we can write this as 1 minus root 1 minus 4a over 2a is equal to 420 by 406. And we just got this by dividing 406 from both sides. So now we have one variable and one expression. So by simple algebra, we should be able to solve this. Now, at this point in the problem, you're free to compute this out for yourself because if you're at this level on an AMC 12 test, this should be a piece of cake. But in case you're tired, I'm going to show it through anyways. The first step to solving this equation for A is to simplify the right-hand side fraction. As 420 by 406 can be simplified down into 30 by 29. The next thing we can do is cross-multiply both diagonals. So we would do 30 times 2a, which would give us 60a, is equal to 29 times 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4a. The product of that would be 29 minus 29 root 1 minus 4a. Next, we can flip the 60a and the minus 29 root 1 minus 4a, and then square both sides. 
Doing so, we would get 29 squared times 1 minus 4a is equal to 29 squared minus 2 times 29 times 60 squared a squared. Multiplying the left-hand side a little bit, we get 29 squared minus 4a times 29 squared. But we can cancel this out from both sides and not actually compute for 29 squared. So from here, we can rewrite this as negative 4a times 29 squared is equal to negative 2 times 29 times 60a plus 3600a squared. And we see that we have a on both sides of the equations in all terms. So we can cancel out an a again. So we only have one term with a left. And this is this 3600a. So we can move all this stuff back to the other side. Negative 4 times 29 squared plus 2 times 29 times 60. We get 116 is equal to 3600a. And for computing, thus by dividing by both sides, we get 116 by 3600 is equal to a. But just like 420 over 406, 116 over 3600 can be simplified down once again, even more. And we can do that by dividing 4 from both sides. 4 from the top would give us 29, and 4 from the bottom would give us 900. So as a simplified fraction in the form of p over q, we get that a is equal to 29 over 900. So that means p is 29, q is 900, and their sum is 929. C. So this problem was not easy, but it was possible to solve using just a couple of cool algebra tricks. Just a clever ways to deal with the terrible notation and persistence. And by just having these two things, you just solved the 2020 AMC 12A number 25.